Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Hi there, I'm Paula Tupman on the snowy Detroit roads, and I'm going to tell you when you can expect to get your roads clear, and also uh, we've got a superhero in our midst. I'll explain. All right, Paula, and the snow's impact isn't the only weather concern across Metro Detroit this afternoon. We're moving from record snow to record cold as we take a look at our wind chill projections for the hours to come. And that is topping our news here at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasmi. We want to show you some video of people digging out of all that snow. But if you do plan on shoveling today, you're going to need to bundle up. Let's get right on over to meteorologist Brandon Rue with the very latest warning for us on this Tuesday. Yeah, we have concerns for record lows, dangerous cold following this big snow. This is just a quick look back at yesterday. Big winters. Look at Lexington over a foot, 14 inches of snow. Sanilac County up in Bad Axe, 12 inches, 11 inches in Ann Arbor, 10 inches Sterling Heights, Lake Orion. 10.6 inches. Now it's all about the wind chills. 22 degrees with a west wind at 10. So it feels like 11 at Metro and we still have single digits outside of the city and outside in this stuff unprotected for a short time and you can run into trouble just on your own. It gets worse from here. We do have bright sun and temps that will eventually get to around 27. Might get an isolated flake or two mid afternoon. Just something breaking free from Lake Michigan. Other than that, we're pretty good to go here with sunshine out there. And now everybody's digging out. And our Paula Tutman is on Detroit's east side live trying to figure out when the neighborhoods are going to get cleared. Yeah, hi there. So first of all, you wouldn't be a news crew covering snowfall until your vehicle got stuck. And that is what happened to us. But Chet Jackson here, who's with Ace Lawn Care and Snow Removal out of Ferndale, has something that kind of looks like a transformer. He came to our rescue, got us out. We're going to show you that uh, probably today at, at 4 and 5 because it, will, it really was remarkable how he got us out in about five minutes. But, but another big story here today and probably really is the biggest story, and that is when you talk about the city of Detroit, it has more than 1,800 miles of residential streets. And I can remember covering when the, the streets simply weren't plowed. That is not the case. Walk with me, Zach, right here so I can show you. Okay, so right here. So right over there, that's eight mile. This is Charleston right here. You can see 16 feet of cleared road. That is because they have contractors out right now who are clearing the roads. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. It started snowing last night. Why didn't these contractors get the call until 7 a.m. this morning? That's because there's a threshold and they explain. The accumulation of snow is what's important. So we had to wait till there was about six inches or so of snow on the ground before we can call them. Once they are activated, they have about a 24 hour window to make sure that their contracts are completed. That means all of the streets within their areas must be plowed at that 16 wide path down the middle of the street so that residents can get to the major roadways. Yeah, there's something else important for you to know that Detroiters, if you have cars on the street, if you're able to move them, please do between now and 7 a.m. so that they can continue to get these streets cleared. Uh, you're not going to be ticketed, but they do want your help in moving those cars. Not everybody has a driveway, but in the meantime, Chet, I didn't know if I was going to get out till spring, man. Thanks for letting me get my job done. We appreciate no you. Problem. All right, you. Paula Tupman reporting live. Back to you. Alrighty, Paula, thank you. Right now, though, we want to get to some breaking news that we're following. It's from Detroit's east side, where we have learned that a body was found inside of a burned out car. Take a look. This is a brand new video from the scene there. We're told the body was found at Elgin and Gilbo, uh, as you can see here on the map. Let's get right on out to local force Larry Sproul. He is following the story for us this afternoon. Larry, what are you learning? 
Good afternoon, everyone. There are a lot of questions. Police are still trying to figure out at this very hour, like how did this car get here? Who was that body inside? Take a look behind me. You can see police are still out here at this very hour. Now they're trying to figure out what happened, but it's really hard because as you can see, this area is pretty vacant. There is one abandoned home to the right of the screen, but that's pretty much it. So it's really a tough time trying to find witnesses and even to see if anybody was out here at the time of the car fire. Now we have new video into our newsroom. Our police tell me they got a call around 942 this morning and found a car that was burned here at Elgin and Gilbo on the choice east side. Now, after looking inside the car, they also found a body inside. But the interesting thing is the car was covered with snow. So right now, police are trying to figure out how did the car get here? How long was the car here since it was covered with snow and who was inside that car? Now, we also know that arson investigators, they are out here right now. Detectives are out here as well. We are working to find out more information as far as what all happened out here. When did they get the call? When did the car fire start? All that information. I'll have another update coming up tonight at five. We are live on the Choice East side this afternoon. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, thank you for the update. Developing now, community members and Wayne State students gathered today calling for an end to the divide against the school's president, Roy Wilson, and several members of the Board of, Dor of Governors. Many say that the divide is shadowing over the successes Wayne State has uh, over the years. Others just want the board and president to work together and resolve their differences. We're going to have more on this story coming up on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Detroit businessman Bob Carmack, who has a long-running battle with Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan, is making new accusations. Carmack telling Detroit City Council earlier this morning that he has video evidence to show Duggan took bribes in connection with the city's demolition program. Carmack says current mayor Mike Duggan is worse for the city of Detroit than imprisoned former mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. There's a guy in jail doing 28 years. A black man. This man's worse than that guy. Damn. I mean, worse. He should be in jail. Lock this guy up. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. Lock him up. Very vocal there in City Council. We're going to have much more on Carmack's allegations and response to them. That's coming up on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Even more breaking news at this hour. The Supreme Court will allow Sandy Hook families to move forward in their lawsuit against gunmaker Remington. Today they announced that they will not hear their case. This action will allow the family of, of children who were killed in that 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre to move forward with that lawsuit. The company had warned that such a result could potentially increase the liability of firearm manufacturers to suits brought by victims of gun crimes. Also breaking, Jimmy Carter recovering from surgery now to remove pressure on his brain. The former president underwent surgery at Emory University Hospital. That's in Atlanta, and it happened earlier this morning. The Carter Center tweeted today that there were no complications from the surgery, so some good news to report. Well, after weeks of closed door depositions on the Ukraine investigation, the process goes public tomorrow. Top U.S. envoy to Ukraine, Bill Taylor, and top State Department official George Kent will appear in front of the House Intelligence Committee tomorrow. And then on Friday, former Ukraine ambassador Maria Yovanovitch will testify. So be sure to tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. right here on Local 4. We'll have special live coverage of the impeachment hearings. So it's a reality for so many people here in Metro Detroit. Things happen and making ends meet becomes impossible. Well, that's where the heat and warmth funds mission comes in. It is sure to make a heating bill that does not go unpaid with people who are struggling to pay their bills. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester joining us live now from our special phone bank with a way for all of us to help Hank. Everard, you are right. I mean, we're getting a touch of old man winter already here in fall, so we know it could be a long, cold winter. We are here live in our Gift of Warmth phone bank. The number that you can call, uh, sponsored by DTE, 313-298-WDIV. We've been getting lots of donations. In fact, we have a big one right now. I want to bring in Josie Norcia who has been kind enough to present the team at Thaw, the Heat and Warmth Fund, with $10,000. Josie, that is so sweet. Why did you want to make this donation? Thank you, Hank. Um, this is Jerry and myself's favorite donation um, charity yeah. 
and we think that nobody should be without heat, especially a cold day like this. Yeah, absolutely, and that's and that's the truth. That's the reality. I mean, unfortunately, we're already seeing cold temperatures, snow and cold, and that could be the reality for many, many months to come, and there are a lot of Metro Detroiters that need your help. So the number you can call right now, 313-298-WDIV. You can also hop over to our website, click on Detroit.com. Everard live coverage throughout the day and also online, so we will keep you posted as we work to help the people that need it the most. Back to you. Absolutely, and we have so many generous people here in Metro Detroit. We know that we can beat last year's record. Hank, thank you. All right, still to come, the fate of thousands of young, undocumented immigrants who arrived here in the U.S. as children is on the line. We've got a closer look at what's at stake coming up next.